it's Jessica here from Fox's Knits. So today is my monthly check-in or video podcast and I will be sharing with you what I've been up to in the past month. So things that I'm working on, finished objects, yarn additions, that kind of thing. So my channel is jam-packed, well I like to think it's jam-packed, with chatty knitting video um, stuff and it's where I share my finished objects. I do this monthly uh, video podcast as well as the occasional knitting know-how video. So yay, welcome as always. Thank you so much for joining me um, from wherever you are in the world. I am in sunny Mangafai in Northland, New Zealand. Uh, this is where I live with uh, my do uh, teenage daughter. Whoa! <laughs> my teenage daughter, my partner, our rescue pets Jasper and Primrose. Um, Jasper the dog, Primrose the cat. So Mangafai, where I live, is a really tiny seaside town north of Auckland. There's about 5,000 people that live here. It's basically like living within home and away. Should you have seen that TV show? Uh, so you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Fox's Blog. And remember that I include for you any show notes or links to what I've mentioned within this episode, such as patterns or products, in the description below. So make sure that you check out those at the end of this video. And of course, if you haven't already, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. Plus remember to turn on notifications and maybe you'd like to check out the rest of my channel for more knitting content just like this. Or of course, if you enjoy this episode, give it a like. Yay! So, hey, by the way, guys, uh, can I just say a massive thank you to everyone before we start. So, I launched this channel in July, which was just about three months ago, and I, to be fair, didn't think anyone would really give it a rat's ass. I, well, I didn't think anyone would be into it, and it seems that I was wrong. I, I'm really glad that I was wrong. Um, so now I've just reached over a thousand followers, which is such a small fry kind of number, but when I thought that I'd probably have like maybe 20 or 30 at the best of times, um, yeah. It's been really humbling and really, really wonderful to know that there are so many of you lovely folks out there that have subscribed and even more of you that regularly watch, um, which is just like such a warm, fuzzy, high five situation. And yeah, really like it. Thank you. So creating something like this has actually really pushed me pushed me out there and um, I was terrified to do this. I am, I am, I mean I've done public speaking and stuff but I, I don't like being on camera. I am behind the lens often and that is perfectly fine. That is usually where I would like to be. So creating a channel like this was totally out of that comfort zone. Um, I am a really introverted person and I have massive anxiety that actually uh, I find um, not just a struggle with this, but an everyday struggle to kind of get out there. So setting up a YouTube channel was like the last thing that was ever on my mind and whatever I want, you know, it just was so far from what I was doing. But I'm really, really glad that I did. And it's just really awesome to know that there are people out there who enjoy what I'm creating, um, love checking in with me all the time, uh, hearing what I'm up to. And I've had so many lovely comments from you about the way that I style my channel, um, my approach, just even my little graphics and stuff. Um, as a designer who is um, a total like detail oriented person, I really, really appreciate that. Um, a huge amount of time and energy and love goes into making everything that I create for you. Um, and yeah, so I would love it if I could do this all the time and um, yeah, let me work on it. Moving on. So uh, yes, we will start as usual with finished objects because after all they are the most interesting. So uh, if you weren't aware already of the, the format, so during my monthly podcast I just kind of go over all my finished objects quite lightly and if you're keen to know, um, know more about it or see more, um, see more of everything in detail and know all the nitty gritty, you can watch that specific video which will have way more detail. Um, so when the finished object video is ready, it'll be on my playlist, um, so make sure that you have subscribed and turn on the bell so that you know when those are posted. Yay! Housekeeping, out the way. <laughs> um, so I basically just have a couple of finished objects for you this month. 
uh, mainly because for me work has really picked up quite a bit um, so I have had to prioritize actual paid work from clients uh, we also had a little bit of time away with a weekend away in Pahia for a friend's 40th birthday uh, I'll be sharing a little bit more about that later on in the video so you can virtually travel around a little slice of New Zealand uh, plus Grace was off with um, Grace was off school at home with the second kind of lockdown thing so anyway it's just been a little bit less time than I would have liked to have sit down and knit so plus as I mentioned creating content for this channel does actually take me quite a bit of time with the planning and the things and the and the setting it all up and the editing and everything not complaining at all uh, but it is quite time consuming so um, I do apologize if you've been waiting for my monthly check-in and um, and it's only just turning up now first off I'm gonna show you my balloon cardigan which I am wearing now um, yeah I am so chuffed that I have finished this puppy. I have been wanting to make it for so long. But after so many other petite knit patterns um, that I had already shared with you, I actually thought it was probably about time to give you a bit of a break. So, yes, this is a petite knit pattern. Uh, it is the cardigan version of the balloon sweater that I have already made. Uh, I am actually finishing editing that video at the moment, so um, it won't be far away, but keep your peepers peeled for that one. So I love how slouchy and comfortable this cardigan is. The pattern has a lot of positive ease and it was such a simple silhouette, um, much like all of her patterns actually. I wouldn't have said however that this was the same version, like the cardigan version of the same sweater. This has a, I don't know if you can see it there, but this has a raglan sleeve. Uh, the sweater does not. Uh, the cuffs on the sweater are like this long they're like super duper long these are not the only similarity i think is in the shape of the sleeve and i guess that's where the name actually comes from now if you recall in the last episode i had a go at dyeing some yarn with avocado um i'll try and put in a little bit of footage from the last month episode um so I used avocado to dye the yarn myself for this base and it really was the perfect pairing and I love how it has come out. Can you hear my dog walking across the floor? <laughs> I have wooden floors in my living area where I'm filming this today and um, the dog walks across it like he's wearing little high heels. I'm just hoping he's not going to bark at anything. So um, what was I saying? It's great. I love it. It's I, I held it double with um, the fluff. Anyway, I will be doing a separate video on the process that I took to dye the yarn, so you can watch that if you are interested. So the base yarn I used was my favorite nudie yarn. I'm just hold, holding up my arm so that you can see the colors together. There you go. Um, it was uh, my Wild Earth Yarns 100% uh, Merino 3-ply. It is an undyed, uh, non-superwash yarn that is super, super snuggly and it makes the perfect base for holding double. And as I've discovered, it's really, really great to dye with. So I held this with my favorite, favorite fluff that I have shown you before. It's a million times. So you're going to be sick of it. It's um, Camulus by Fiber Spates. And um, this is gorgeous. Anyway. Soft, fluffy, mmm. Uh, this is a three-ply lace weight yarn that is made with 74% baby story alpaca and 26%... Can you come here? Come here. Come on. We'll get him to stop walking first. Here we go. Here's Jasper. He's just walking around. Oh, I know. There we go. Say hi to the people. <laughs> He's got like this like messy, messy haircut. Oh. A bit nervous yeah you're gonna bark at something hopefully not no. anyway it's quite hot in the house I think he's walking around trying to find a cool spot anyway this is the colorway blush um, I think I probably have shown this to you before and <clears throat> to me I've got dog fur in my mouth yum uh, so to me this is the perfect fluff is you can actually wear it right against your skin um, and I don't think that you can do that with many of those fluffy things like mo even mohair the softest mohair I can't I can't wear it right right there so anyway um, so I do still have a few skeins of this left which I'm really not mad about because I'm gonna use it um, I use it all the time it's beautiful so this oh my god 
Oh, I shouldn't have kissed the dog. That's gross anyway, isn't it? Uh, so, sorry. So this cardigan took me about two, three and a half weeks to finish it. And to be perfectly honest, I really struggled physically with my hands, uh, with the endless rows of purling, uh, mainly in my right hand. It just did not like it. So as a designer, I already have to be careful um, with the way that I work. I've already had a couple of shoulder injuries from kind of overuse or just sitting uncomfortably that tend to have pain that originates from my shoulder but flows through into my hand. So um, for those of you that don't know, I'm a graphic and web designer um, by trade. That's my full-time job. I run my own business and I'm also a photographer. So I spend a lot of time on the computer. I probably spend about eight or nine hours a day at my desk. I I do have it all set up in a way that is nice and safe to use. I have a tablet that I use with my mouse so that I can change my hand movements. And um, I'm trying, yeah, I have my desk all set up to the right height. My legs are at the right angle. My screen is the right, you know, I've, I've done the whole um, occupational therapy kind of thing for sitting at home. I've worked at home for a long time. So um, yeah, as much as I love having a pretty desk set up, um, I'm more about safe necks, safe backs, safe hands, everything. So anyway, I am trying to be more mindful about that when it comes to my knitting as well, because I find sitting down for a long period of time and doing anything repetitive, um, yeah, I'm really good at it with work. I get up, I do stretches, I move around. So I'm just trying to do that a little bit more when I knit. Anyway, totally digressing. Side note there for you. It took me ages. Uh, my next finished object is a gift for my dad for his 70th birthday later this year. It's in November. So dad, if you're watching, could you just skip ahead a little bit because I don't want you to spoil it. Um, please. Thank you very much. Okay. We've skipped. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Uh, so this is the Dyer hat by um, Caitlin Hunter from Boyland Knitworks. And this was my first time doing any colour work. Yeah. There we go. Very good. It's not very good. I don't know why I'm saying that. I'm so sorry. Um, again, I will be recording a separate finished object video for this one, which we up very, very soon. But I really, really love trying this out for the first time. Um, I wanted to make something for my dad after he's been watching all of these episodes. And, um, and he actually mentioned to me how much he really loves them, which is super, super sweet. But also now super, super annoying as I have to be really sneaky with the um, gifts that I share with you guys. Because I do like to make stuff for people. Um, yeah, I like to make things and give things pe give people gifts and I love giving surprises. So yeah, I'm really going to have to like hide my channel from my friends. Anyway, that's what I'm doing. So the yarn that I used for this hat was a similar... Um, what did I use? The yarn that I actually used for the black and the um, mustard was from my stash. So I don't actually have um, labels for those. Uh, but the blue yarn is the same yarn that I used for the marshmallow hat that uh, I showed you last month. Which was uh, New Zealand made 100% wool uh, by a company called Bandit in Escapade. Uh, which I thought worked really, really well together. What do you think? Do you think I made a good choice of the colours? I think so. Uh, the pattern sample used for it was more of a monochrome colour palette, which is really what stood out for me. And it also used a yarn held double to make a DK weight. But for this, I just used a DK weight yarn as I had these complementary colours to hand already. Um, and also, I think my dad would prefer something that wasn't as fluffy. I do think that I'm going to make one for myself as well, as I really, really love this graphic pattern. But I think I might make it in like really um, monochrome kind of tones and blacks and greys and maybe like a little bit of white. That's the idea. So I'll move that there. Um, oh, and before I forget, um, I will put in a couple of little snaps of the teeny finished objects that I made. So I finished the chin ties on the marshmallow hat that I showed you last episode. And I finished these little baby socks as well. And the reason why I'm showing you a photo is that I don't actually have these to hand anymore. I packaged them up to send to my brother and sister-in-law in the UK, uh, so they're not here anymore. But they turned out super, super cute, and I can't wait to get a few photos of them being worn by the little people that I've sent them to. So that's what I have finished and ready to go. Um, sorry, it's not all that much. So uh, I am, however, 
working on a bunch of stuff and I have been breaking my own monogamy rule. As I mentioned before, I am a very monogamous knitter and I only knit one project at a time, usually, uh, which means that I kind of knit things a little bit faster. Well, I actually don't think that I do. I, I think that it's all in my mind, but it feels like I knit things faster. But after making this cardigan, uh, I really needed to take a break from all of that purling, do something else, um, and I started a few things that I could pick up between times and refresh a little bit before going back to finish my cardigan. So cardigans, not sure I'll be making them again. Sorry, just had to have a sip of water. It's incredibly hot in here and I'm in a very warm cardigan. Uh, so anyway, some of these things I will be frogging, uh, a few of them, but I did want to show you before I become destructive. So what am I working on? Well, I'm working on a sweater, which I will show you here. I'm not actually going to frog this, it's just that I haven't done very much of it. So, um, my little bag. Now this, this actually is really cute. This used to be my kindy bag, and kindy is, um, is preschool, I think that's what you would call it, over in the States and... I don't know what you call it in Australia, but this was my kindy bag and my mum kept it from when I was little and I have always used it for knitting since I was a kid and um, as you can see here, it's got um, it's got my daughter's name in it because she actually used it when she started um, at her daycare. So this bag has done the rounds and it's lasted very well and I'm very impressed with um, my hoarding abilities. So uh, basically this... I really haven't done that much. I, I don't know. I'll show you because I think the concept is a little bit interesting. But um, I've basically started this sweater, which... Let's take these off, eh? So I've started this sweater that I've literally just started the front. I think this is the, this is the back, actually. Um, I've done the yoke, uh, the shoulders, and um, I'm just starting to work through that. So this will actually be a rolled over... Uh, neck like this uh, and I will stitch that down you can hardly see it because it's black and you can't see black so I'll just talk about it uh, basically I'm not following any particular one pattern as such it's a little bit of a Frankenstein kind of thing um, I am just making and using parts of sweaters that I like but I kind of know the general gist of all the sizes and things like that uh, it could be horribly, horribly dangerous and tear inducing, or it could be totally amazing. So I'm going to go with the latter. Basically, I am wanting to make a really good base sweater um, and kind of create a pattern that I can use myself for whenever I just want to make something that works really well. And <clears throat> I did just want to have something that I could wear and wear and wear. And also one of the reasons why I am making it in black. Um, I do wear a lot of black. I haven't on this channel much although I have worn a lot of black and white and just plain stuff but anyway I have completely forgotten how awful it is knitting on black and it is really hard to see anything especially when you're working at night time uh, so I am using my Debbie Bliss Rialto four ply can barely see it because it's black this is a four ply and it is incredibly bouncy yarn it is soft but it's very bouncy um, do you know what I mean when I say that? It's just like it's stretchy, but it's not like stretchy. It's just bouncy. Um, I think that that's actually one of the qualities of uh, Superwash. This does have quite a tight twist, but it's not a high twist. Um, and I do actually think that that's totally one of the reasons why I prefer natural, non-Superwash yarn. But, you know, I had already purchased this. I had a 10 ball sweater pack. I will be able to use any leftovers for all kinds of things when I'm doing um, details or stripes or anything like that. And to be fair, it will be a sweater that I'm hopefully going to be wearing a lot. And I do think that that type of easy wear yarn is a good choice in that respect. Um, Superwash has its time to shine. And I think that this might be one of those times. Uh, so my Mimi sweater has basically been relegated to the cupboard. And I haven't touched it uh, since I showed it to you last which means that I have two sweaters on the go, plus all this other stuff. And to be fair, I'm actually thinking that I might go back to the drawing board with the yarn on that one and do another colour. Um, yeah, I sh yeah, I'm just gonna, just gonna leave it. So, so other things that I am working on uh, that may not live past this episode. Um, so these are some socks that I am knitting for Zane. 
And I mentioned before in my last episode that I wanted to make him some socks to take away snowboarding. Well, he has gone away to Mount Ruhapehu this morning. I dropped him off at his friend's house. They've all driven down together. And as you can see, the socks are here and he is not. <laughs> um, to be fair though, I'm, I really wasn't just, I just really wasn't feeling these. Uh, they look great. I love the yarn. Beautiful yarn. It, it's knitted up really, really nicely. It will be a really, really good, uh, good sock yarn. Um, but I haven't been really been feeling the tension with this size needle and I think that with the yarn combination they're just a little bit loose and um, the top part is way too slouchy not ideal for wearing um, socks to have them um, you know like too loose uh, so I do think that I'm going to remake them with another size needle as these are a 2.75 they really should be on a 2.25 millimeter and it's super annoying as I only really noticed when I was coming up to uh, about this part here and then I got him to try them on and I decided to keep going because I thought, oh, when the heel is done and stuff, you know, like it might, it might be all right. But I really just should have stopped and started again. So the yarn is a high twist four ply, four ply merino from Kiwiana, Kiwiana. So these are a pattern um, using combined parts. The sizing and main part is the uh, Rylite socks from Tin Can Knits um, with just stockinette stitch and not the garter stitch section. So, and the heel flap is, um, just the flap, is the heel flap from the Cyril socks that I made um, and shared with you uh, in the last video that I posted. I just really, really loved the texture so much and... Um, I thought it looked really, really smart, and yeah, so hopefully I will start again on these this, uh, this week at some stage, and I really want to have them done relatively quickly, so. So another pair that I have moved on to waist yarn are the Reader Socks, and I guess I just wasn't really feeling these. I just thought, I just, the, the yarn is beautiful, uh, the yarn is gorgeous. But I do think that the lace pattern, I mean you can't even see it, the lace pattern is just getting a little bit more lost and I think that these socks would be better in a more solid colour. So I did get a new one that I'll show you shortly and I will use this yarn to potentially make a gift for somebody that I know that they'll absolutely love with these colours. So everything works out in the end. So that's my works in progress and um, yeah, not a lot of progress. A few works, basically shouldn't have even bothered showing you the two pairs of socks and just started again. So next I wanted to share with you um, my additions and uh, most of the time this is about yarn. But I'm going to start with one addition that I am super super happy about um, and I wanted to show you because it's very exciting. I'm particularly happy about these, so they are my new yarn storage and previously I had been storing everything in a cupboard in my spare room. Uh, which is totally fine and I don't think that anyone needs specific storage but for me like any spare room or you know some spare part of the house the junk tends to multiply and it gets in the way and I couldn't actually access the cupboard and it was getting really hard so I wanted something that I could easily get to and have it kind of close by so that where I sit and knit but also I needed a cupboard to keep it away from the sun in here because the sun fades everything, it changes the colour of everything and I didn't want to have anything sitting out that was open to the UV and things like that. New Zealand, winterless north, too much sunshine, can't believe I'm complaining, I'm not complaining at all. So I bought uh, two black lockers and I assembled them, well I say I assembled them myself, I started doing it myself, there was a lot of swearing, I dropped something on my foot and then Zane helped me do it to hold everything because it really was a two person job. Now I've organised my cabinets into areas of light yarns together and up the top here I have all my four ply and fingering weights, below are more of my tools and needles. Underneath I have my nudie yarns and then my fluffy alpaca and mohair. Uh, on the other side I have DK weights and some of the large sweater lots of yarn all together. And at the bottom of this one I have my whips and project bags, uh, my folder of printed patterns and uh, tools like my ball winder and things like that. New yarns that I've purchased are... I've only got a... F I say I don't have very many but I actually have 
like look let's not judge so this is a skein from kiwiana kiwiane who um this is called currency of love it is a four ply merino twist um and i don't know if it's super not wash or not but anyway beautiful uh i actually think that these would be really nice for my rita socks um but again i do think that i still need something a little bit more plain for that i actually bought this to use as a gift for somebody um so i'll probably just use it for that but i do really love the subtle base with the pops of color like yeah beautiful it's really nice now next are some of the yarns that I have mentioned um, in the last month's episode that I was that I was waiting for arrive. So these are I uh, these are from Yeah Yeah Yarn in Christchurch. I've got and I've got a couple more in the cupboard. Uh, so Yeah Yeah Yarn's in Christchurch and uh, she is so so talented. Um, previously, um, she's actually made everything to order. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm just going to have a wee drink because I'm a bit parched. I've got my, my water and my whiskey glass. Fancy, around here. So, uh, previously she made everything to order. And I think that it was just becoming uh, quite a challenging time. And now instead she's changed to dying on demand and having uh, ready stock available. Which I think is... I think it's probably easier to manage for a whole lot of reasons. Um... I was perfectly happy to wait for this, but I, um, I'm i so glad it's here because it's beautiful. And anyway, it would have been a lot of work for her and, and it's fine. You kind of, you got to do what's right for you when it comes to that kind of thing. So I bought three of these uh, skeins of mohair. Uh, this is a dance party and they are a 70, 30 kid silk lace. Um, <clears throat> and I love the colors. I don't want to, I'm trying to angle that to the light so that you can see without my face in the way so gorgeous I love that this is like super super bright and poppy and neon and then there's all this um pastel kind of color up the top I don't have I, the other skate they all look kind of different they all look the same but different I've got fluff up my nose now so um I have already caked up one of my skeins of yarn to start using and just to show I mean they look really different when they're caked it's still beautiful and I know that this is going to be as poppy as this but it's amazing how things change like that isn't it and because I was so excited to see what this would look like because I want to hold it double with some of my nudie yarn I've already made up a little swatch because I'm organized I haven't blocked it yet but so this is my little swatch that I made and as you can see the colors are so poppy still trying to get that off my face um with the with the bright colors and the little pops of neon and the turquoise and greens and I think it looks really cool and it's amazing to think that that is actually like all of the color is come is coming from that mohair the next yarn I got was also from Ye Ye Yarn and it is in the colorway Inferno which is bright and lots of turquoise really cool so this is a 100% uh, merino superwash four ply <clears throat> no I'm talking rubbish this is a non superwash merino because it's the same base that I use for my nudie yarn and I know yeah I was really stoked to get this because I know exactly how it's going to knit up and how it's going to feel um, the colors are gorgeous I don't know if you can see all of those tones that are on there it's really really bright in person and, a, and there's this amazing turquoise and all these corals and bright colors down here I think it's gonna be amazing so I'm actually I didn't get this for myself I got this for making a shawl for my mum so I think that she will really love it they are totally her kinds of colors I just wanted to make her something that she could snuggle up into and yeah something that she'd love my mum's a knitter she gets it it's cool um, another yarn that I picked up this morning, which I wasn't expecting to include in this episode because I had already kind of like jotted down all my little notes and stuff that I wanted to talk about last night and this wasn't in it. So yeah, 
This is a skein of yarn that I picked up this morning because I was driving past uh, one of my local uh, knitting shops called The Knitting Truck in Matacana and I um, have no self-control and I saw this and I thought I had to have it because it's beautiful. So Prosper Yarns are hand dyed in New Zealand. They're another um, New Zealand dyer and I think that the base is also uh, New Zealand grown and manufactured yarn which is really amazing and this just looks so soft and beautiful. It's in the colorway called Let's Be Frank and it is a 100% New Zealand merino uh, single ply yarn but with the weight of a fingering weight yarn so no idea what I'm gonna make with this I just had to have it so I also picked some of um, I picked up some Chiagu little shorties I just got them in here in my little case so I love Chiagu needles um, I use the bamboo set um, I have both sizes in there so I picked up some of these little shorties and as you know I hate magic loop I don't need you to yell at me about it I know that lots of people really like it and um yeah so I usually use double pointed needles for socks and sleeves but I was really keen to try these out because I thought well it might help me speed up a little bit and I did use these for the reader socks and um yeah I will be frogging them back but not because of the needles just because of the Anyway, the time we've been over that. So it was great to be able to just power on through and not have to change needles. I think that I will be using these quite a bit. So they're teeny tiny. Look, they're really dinky. I'm too dark. In the light. Yeah, super dinky, super cute. They come in a set of two. Um, I don't like the lace cables. I much prefer the spin cables, but you know, who? it's fine. Uh, so they come in a set of two and I bought one set of both sizes um, that come together and these are the 2.25 millimeter uh, needles and they just um, tuck inside here really really nicely in here Woo. there we go very good so really really stoked with those and yeah I think that they'll speed up my sock knitting quite a bit especially if you're just knitting a pair of vanilla socks where you just need to get on with it and keep going and then you can use a double pointed needle to do the other side of the heel flap and then and then that's it so yeah so what's been happening in the last month well we have moved out of this kind of mini lockdown that New Zealand was in well part of it like New Zealand if you imagine so the top part is Northland where I live then it's Auckland which kind of covers that next layer and then the rest of it is kind of different regions and stuff kind of as you would expect so when Auckland went into lockdown we were kind of stranded a little bit in Northland and while we were free to move around the country you kind of couldn't because you had to go every you had to go south to kind of get everywhere Mungify is kind of on the border of Auckland even Auckland is massive like it's a huge region and so Grace's school is down technically in Auckland and so she was off school it meant that we were kind of in lockdown as well and she really missed going to school and seeing her friends so it's been amazing for her to go back to um, school and be in the classroom again they've been back I think for like a week or two and as I mentioned earlier in the intro uh, a few weeks ago we were able to head away up north for the weekend to a cute little seaside town called Pahia we're all seaside towns in New Zealand I guess I mean you're never too far away from the ocean so we went to Paihia for a friend's uh, 40th birthday and it was so awesome just to have a couple of nights away, have a break, have a change of scenery. Uh, Paihia is a really sweet town and uh, while we were there we visited uh, Russell on the ferry. It's like a 15 minute ferry ride just over the, over the bay. Um, it's a super cute little town and it actually was the capital of New Zealand when the country was first colonized and it had the first ever liquor license at the local uh, pub so it used to be called the Hell Hole of New Zealand um, as it was a bit unruly anyway we visited the museum we had an awesome walk along the waterfront uh, looking at all the cute old houses well I say walk we walked Zane one wheeled um, we were out for the day and the weather was absolutely mint all weekend and we had a great time. 
Uh, we also visited a little place called Waipu Cove uh, to have some lunch with some friends and uh, Waipu is a, a beautiful stretch of coastline. It's part of Bream Bay and it's only about 15 or 20 minutes up the road. So lucky that we get to live here and um, I get to go to these beautiful isolated beaches whenever I fancy basically and this is where we take the dog for a walk and doing all that stuff. So I do realise that I am incredibly lucky. Uh, you may have also noticed that I have an updated logo. I don't know, I'll put it here. I might put it here. <laughs> uh, I have been spending a lot of time working away on the online store and part of what I've been creating was some branding. I thought I should probably do that for myself. Uh, so I made this little animation to show you. Um, so there you go. Uh, it was nice to get that ticked off the list. And I do find that creating my own design work is really, really hard. I'm, I'm a really crap client for myself. I've decided. <laughs> so yeah, so some of my new products have been arriving for the store as well. Uh, if you missed it, I'm actually creating a Knitting Notions Boutique for knitting and crochet accessories. Uh, and it's been so much fun. I have found it really hard to find the kinds of things that I like that suit my style. So I figured that I would just do it myself. <laughs> Uh, so it's also been a great way that I can um, I can hopefully begin to fund more of the channel. It'll help me purchase more yarn and patterns and um, allow me to have more time to um, balance that paid client work with um, with this kind of thing as well. The store itself will just be notions and tools. Um, at the moment I have no plans to stock any yarn. So I'm hoping to have the site ready to launch in the next month. Uh, it's been quite handy being a web designer myself. So if you're keen to know when that will be, you can visit the website and sign up to the mailing list to be first in the know. I'll also be doing a special channel discount code for all of my lovely watches. So I have had a couple of things arrive that I wanted to share with you. The first are these little black stalk scissors that I've got, little matte black. I don't know if you're going to be able to see these, but um, I have some of these little hexagon stitch markers that was just catching the light well they are very very cool and yeah I had to make sure that they would work first right so next uh projects to make and I always feel like there are so many because I yeah I don't know if I'll keep doing this segment within my monthly podcast I think that it gets a little bit too big to manage and I've been talking forever and no one wants to hear me for this length of time so Anyway, I'll share with you a couple. Um, as we are coming into, well, we're in spring and we're coming into summer. In fact, Daylight Savings is just two weeks away. Um, I'm going to uh, make some projects that I can uh, create with cotton and linen silk blends. Um, it gets seriously hot here where I live, so I can't really make anything to wear that is overly heavy. But I would like to make a few things like uh, the Hoi An top by Nomad Stitches. Or the Ripple Bralette by Jessie Mead Designs. So those are two things that I'd like to make. So let me know in the comments if you're planning on making anything that I have chatted to you about today. Um, I don't think I've chatted to you about anything in particular that I think that anyone would want to make except my cardigan. So anyway, let me know what you're making. I really love to hear about what everyone's up to. I love reading your comments and um, hearing what you've got to say. So, as always, my bigger chatty video podcasts are once a month in between times. I will be sharing my finished objects, plus knitting know-how and other goodies. So be sure to check out uh, the rest of my channel if you've enjoyed this episode. And if you have enjoyed it, please make sure that you give it a like. Um, I really do appreciate it. So, thank you for being with me here again today, and I will see you very soon for the next episode of Fox's Knits. Happy knitting, everybody.